This video highlights some of the improvements made to the program LotNet in 2026. And the first major improvement that I want to show you is the custom setback lines. So we've always had you know, a, a front yard, side yard, and rear yard. Each one can have its own distance. So what we've added now is the ability to create unique setback distances along any portion of a lot. To demonstrate that, I'm going to apply a different setback along the rear of these two lots here. As the example would be is I have an existing development of some sort here that requires any new development observe a larger setback. So I go to Area Layout lot network settings and this opens up an LTN file so I've got an existing LTN file here and then I go down to the building placement settings you can see those are on default never forget that you can save these things and uh, re just restore those or, or select those if I hit edit you can see my existing front yard is 30 side is 10 and rear is 20 I'm going to assign uh, a different setback. So I, there's this button now, define custom setback. And I can select this line. Now, if you notice, this is a closed polyline around the entire perimeter. It's not separate vertices along these lot lines here. But when you select that, the program knows that that is just the one portion of that lot, 17 in this case. And I can select more than one, so I'm going to select that line and this line. So in green, you can see those are the portions of the lots that I'm going to apply a different setback to. When I hit Enter, I'm prompted for the setback amount. I'm going to type in 40 for a 40 foot setback. When I hit OK and OK, I then go to Area Layout, Labels, and redraw all network labels. When I do that, you can see that the larger setback has been applied to these two lots. Similarly, I can do the same thing along a corner lot. Same command, lot network settings, building placement settings, edit, define custom setback. I'm going to pick that line and this little part of the fillet and hit enter and the setback amount is 10 feet. Okay and again redraw those lot labels. So you can now see that the custom setback is applied to the two segments of the lot selected. Now if I want to edit any of these setback lines I go to area layout lot network line up, line work and edit custom setback when i do that the custom setbacks are highlighted in green again and i'm going to pick that custom setback and i'm going to remove this fillet by selecting it it turns purple and i'm going to delete that one do you want to delete it yes or no i do it's now moved. I hit enter and again redraw the lot labels. Another improvement made to 2026 LotNet is just simply being able to highlight uh, lot edges and right of way edges. As you're going along with the development, you tend to draw a lot of different line work and you might get confused on which are actually defined as a lot edge or not. So you just simply go to area layout and to lot network line work and I can highlight lot edges. If I do that they light up as what has been defined as a lot edge. Similarly if I go to roads I can highlight right away polylines. So you can see what has been highlighted has actually been defined in the network as a lot edge or a road edge. A more significant update is the use of block names. 
We have had block names in the past, but we have upgraded that substantially for 2026. If we go to the lot network settings, to use this, what you do is you now toggle a starting block name. Now you can see I have this started as block A. So I have all these little pieces of development here. And uh, what I ultimately want to do is have a block A, block B, block C, and a block D. Each one of them starting with lot 1. So as I created these, I had these all set to lot A. So if you take a look at the lot file manager, you'll see that everything is defined in a sequential order. Uh, turn off zoom current here. And they're all in block A. Now I can actually edit those right here, but a better way of doing that is using the lot renumber routine. So now I'm switching to the ribbon here. Uh, more convenient, but I have a re-lot, uh, renumber lot number. So I've already got lot A defined 1 through 16. So I'm going to make this as lot B. So I use the renumber lots. I'm prompted now, because of that toggle, to the block name. I'm going to put in B, B, but I want to start the lot name as 1. So I can pick and redefine just as I did previously. And I'm just using, this is basically a fence selection. So I'm just kind of going around in the order. I'm going in a clockwise order to renumber the lots. I'm going to do that again. And this time it's going to be lot C, I mean block C. Starting lot name is 1, so I'm going to start here and go in this direction, then pick up these two. Now this little bit here I'm going to also make as part of block C, so I'm going to do this again. Block C, starting lot name, I'm going to put 20 to make it consecutive to the last one, and go in this order. And finally, one more time for block name D and lot name 1. I'm going to start here. Go around. Make sure I uh, just cross each lot line. That's all you have to do. And hit enter. Now if I look at my lot file manager, you'll see that I can sort by lot, I can sort by block. And here's my B, one, two, three, four. Scroll down to C. There's two, one, and D, one. The next significant upgrade to 2026 LotNet is the ability to create an uh, isolated parcel. So if you look at this yellow polyline that I have here, the red line is the perimeter, of course, but this yellow polyline here is not defined as a lot. Previously, every lot had to have frontage to be considered a lot. So what we've cr come up with is the ability to design a uh, define what we're calling a parcel line. So if I go to lot network line, I can add a parcel edge. So previously we have add lot edges, which is what I used for all the white lines that you see in here, lot edges. This is going to be a parcel edge, which does not require frontage. So if I just select that polyline, it now created a parcel. It gave it a lot number, but it created a parcel here that does not have frontage to it. Another nice improvement that we've made has to do with lot types. Now we've always had the ability to under the lot network utilities is to assign a lot type. So if you assign a lot type you can have a default lot type. You can create different lot types and each lot type can have its individual setbacks 
for it. It can have individual uh, annotation properties, uh, area labels, etc. What we've done now is add to the LTN file, so I'm going to go back to lot network settings, the ability to load um, lot types. This allows you to create a standard for either an in-house standard uh, for your company or perhaps each individual town or state that you work in has its own lot types that are common in developments in that area. So you can create a LTN file as a standard and then load these so you don't have to recreate them. So I'm going to load this in and I have created a standard called my standards and in there I have a lot type. When I hit open it imports a lot type. This one's called open space. If I edit that you'll see that the open space lot type has individual settings to label lines, arcs, and areas. So I can now load that directly into my LTN file and make use of it by now going to the utilities, assign lot type. I now have a lot type dropdown that includes the open space. So I can hit OK and I'm going to pick um, this lot here and this one here. I'm going to assign both of those as open space lot types. And you can see that previously this had the setbacks, the default setbacks, and it is, but is now labeled with an OS 110. And this is OS, meaning open space. That's part of the lot type settings. I'm going to do the same thing with the, this piece down here and simply, again, utilities, lot network utilities, a sunlight lot type, select open space, crossing selection. Um, I can hit OK and just kind of draw a line through there and hit enter. And this is, again, now an open space parcel. I can actually go back now and add these, uh, or renumber these, which using the same tool I previously demonstrated, renumber lots, and I'm going to give it a block name called open space, and starting lot name is one. I'm going to pick that one, and I'm going to go ahead and include this parcel out here. And do it the same thing here. So this created open space one, open space two. We're going to make this one open space three. Block name, open space. The lot name is three. And there we have it. Finally, we now have a quick little tool to just simply erase all lot net entities, which just makes things go a little quicker instead of isolating the layers and erasing them. We can just use this little broom. So I click that and it erases all line entities that were part of this network. You'll notice that this separate parcel still exists out here because that was created outside of lot network. We don't automate creating those kinds of parcels. So that remains, but it gives you a clean starting slate within the network itself.